Now, we used the uh, transform command uh, in order to be able to facilitate that uh, transformation, right? So we just uh, we used right here uh, a transform about this axis and a transform about this axis. Um, but uh, one thing that's really nice is that if, if instead you wanted, you could do something like T splines, you know, from lines right here. I think we had a question about how the um, the uh, the control objects are working when you're in grip mode. So um, one thing to keep in mind is that here the drag mode depending upon what setting you have selected here for drag mode, that's going to change where that, um, where that uh, manipulator lands. Now, if I'm in face mode, for instance, and I deselect and then select like this, right? that's going to be, and I'm in world uh, drag mode, that's going to be a way to reset where that manipulator lands, giving you the ability to then scale uh, more uniformly. So give that a shot, and um, if, if that doesn't work for you, um, I'll have Gil uh, assist a little bit better uh, to that, or specifically to that question. Um, now, when we go to T splines and we do from lines again, um, let me make sure you have all your geometry selected. It looks like I, I missed a curve right here, so I'm going to just copy that guy over. Right? You can see that this object, this T-splines object, um, instead of transforming and then joining everything, I have the ability to use this other tool called symmetry. Um, and this is really a, a powerful tool. So let's take a look at this guy. This is right to the right of extrude faces. Now when I click on symmetry, it says add symmetry or discover existing symmetry on a complete model. So I'm going to say add. And I'm going to add axial symmetry. And so what that does is it, it brings our element over here, right, symmetrically. But the interesting thing is that um, when you convert, for instance, right, to your smooth object, and let's take a look really quick, you have the ability to edit the original object and have both sides update at the same time. Now, this object, I didn't do the, uh, the extrude faces um, just for the sake of... Uh, you know, speed, but um, you can see how this begins to open up quite a bit of possibilities for you in terms of being able to model much, much faster and more efficiently. Now, that, that symmetry does not have to necessarily exist only in one axis. If you want, you could select and add another line of symmetry. axial, for instance, and it will build out the rest of that geometry for you. So that's really exciting stuff, and um, you know, you can see again if I were to select this face, now everything is updating at the same time. And just as a review, um, If I select any of these faces, right, and I use my extrude, so I'm going to just select faces for extrude. It's really as simple as that and just hitting, uh, you know, escape. So just that one little simple extrude um, helped facilitate all of the smoothing of our object. And these here, these green lines indicate where that symmetry is occurring.
So let's take a moment. Um, I'd like for you guys to fill some questions if you have some to the question window, and um, you know, let's take a, a step back from the little exercise that we just did and make sure that we all understand what's going on here. Because you know, T-spines, as powerful as it is, as exciting as it is, and how quick uh, you know you couple that with how quick it is to get up and running with it. Sometimes um, it it can uh, you know um, be a little bit. Uh, uh, confusing <laughs> what's going on because it isn't exactly like um, working with nerve surfaces. So um, we have a couple of questions coming in. Um, we're just going to take a few minutes, so please feel free to explore the symmetry command, um, the extrude command, um, and take a look at what's happening um, to your geometry as you begin to do that. Now, one um, display mode that's really quite cool is um, in T-splines to better understand really what's happening um, in the surface and the different types of, of points that you have, um, you can pull out this utility toolbar and use this command called um, Edit layout. So if we click on this um, command and we select our T spline um, and hit enter, you'll see that it resets it here, and you can start to see anywhere where there's a star um, what type of joint uh, uh, kind of uh, juncture that is. So if you notice here, this is one, two, three for five edges coming together, which results in a star. Um, that's allowing this object to um, smooth accordingly. All right, so we had a question about um, manipulating a face or anything um, at the object, sub-object level, um, the shape immediately will, will kind of shoot to one side um, uncontrollably. Now, that, that's a really um, uh, you know, kind of weird thing that sometimes pops up. If we, we look at edit mode, right here, um, next to drag mode, there's a button called retopology snap toggle. And for right now, you want to turn that off. Um, you don't want this on. You want that off. And that'll pre prevent um, your uh, snap from shooting over like that. Now, again, just as a reminder, um, you know the the files. Uh, you know, if you have Rhino 4 as opposed to Rhino 5 installed, um, which is totally fine, um, we're going to actually upload another set of files that will be uh, backwards compatible. Um, we're not actually going to be using any of the files during the webinar. They're really just there for your reference um, for after the webinar. Um, so, you know, in just a couple minutes, we'll have the uh, the other files uploaded for you. Now. With the simple transformation um, that we did with Mirror, you can see that um, it was really pretty easy to be able to um, you know, create this element. But what if, for instance, you wanted to do something like this, where, for instance, you're working with uh, an array, like a polar array, right? which adds in another level of, of kind of sophistication in the form here. Well, it's as easy as just um, of of you know keeping an eye on what's happening at these junctures. Like if you notice here, what used to be one edge now has an additional line segment. So we're going to take a look at this as a variation on um, what we were just looking at to ensure that um, you know as you guys um, begin to deviate from the simple exercise that we've been looking at, right? Just something a little bit more. Uh, uh, 
varied, you may need to uh, uh, make some changes to the geometry and the way that you're laying things out. So let's delete those and take a look at this guy one more time. So we use the transformation called mirror. Now, when you mirror, right, that's going to bring this right, over to this side and over to this side. But, for instance, if you wanted to use something like transform array polar, you could specify the center and the number that you want, like four, and generate the additional geometry that would fill this space. But in doing so, what you'll notice is that just like the problem that we had a moment ago when we first started and we were looking at polylines, these elements need to be continuous, right? You need this to be um, a line segment and this to be a line segment. It is a line segment right now, but you need this additional vertical segment and these guys split to account for that. So we're going to take and um, add in an additional line. And let's just go ahead and take the line command one more time and add in a line right here. Now, since I've added that in, I'm just going to run the array polar one more time to distribute that for me. And you'll see that now we have that line everywhere we need it around here. But we do need to split the geometry, right, um, that uh, needs to work with that line segment. So if you notice right here, these guys would all need to be split. So I'll say split and select my line segments. Um, So I have one, two, three. Here I have a duplicate now, so I have to delete that. Here I have a duplicate. Here a duplicate. And here a duplicate. Now this guy didn't split it, it looks like, so let's just split that. There we go. All right, so you can see that now we have all the geometry we need. And one thing that's really interesting is that, you know, sometimes when you're working with this kind of organic modeling uh, uh, process, you might actually have to take, you know, move a step forward and then just delete everything and go right back to here. Now, the reason for that is because when I convert my uh, lines t from curves to t splines using my from lines command, I can also use symmetry and add radial symmetry. So that's really great because if I click here and hit enter, um, sorry, let's do that one more time. Add radial and I'm going to click here. It's going to say what is the angle, so I'm just going to click. And as I drag out, you can see it will generate all that geometry for me. So let's run through that one more time because you know this is really some of the, the really big powerful stuff behind T-splines is that it combines a, you know the the NURBS modeling kind of um, process with the polygon modeling process in order to be able to facilitate extremely fast, very intuitive um, modeling um, in Rhino, and you know it allows you to work with these simple primitives. Uh, knowing that you can always smooth um, up using the T-spline surface um, conversion. Now, we modeled this element to account for the fact that it could connect along this edge. And we looked at how you can mirror the lines and then create the element. And then we looked at how we can design the element and use symmetry. So we're going to use symmetry again. But this time when we add it, we'll add radial. 
And you'll notice it says weld, so that means do you want these edges to actually be treated as a single edge, so it'll, it'll, it'll weld everything together so that the duplicate vertices, the coincident edges or whatever will actually be seen together, uh, welded together really. Um, you specify your center and then you drag out. Converting to my smooth outside, you'll notice that we're able to smooth nicely. Inside, I'm not. I run my command again to extrude faces. I just hit enter. And I go to smooth. And so it's really as quick as that to get up and running. And now, again, that symmetry command, the thing that's really cool is you can just bounce right here to edges. I can select the edges of my object here. And I can use my transform command, right, or my transform manipulator. Um, and here we go. And that's, that's it doing some really good work for us, right? Just manipulate that one lip right there, and all four of these guys are, are updating for us. If I come over here and I, I modulate you know, some of this right here, I'm just going to bring these guys up a bit. And everything is updating at the same time. 